Welcome everyone to episode three of Behind the Masterminds. And uh, before we get started with Tom, we're going to do our raffle drawing from last well, week. Hold on, it's uh, to be in No, no, we're going to do a raffle drawing and then we're going to announce who Tom is. So, right, cool. um, so last week we had um, Escape Tales on the show and they were giving away a free copy of the Awakening game. So here's our raffle box. Drum roll, uh, we're gonna pick out a winner. And we have, this is probably the Instagram handle, but it's uh, Escape Room Escapade. Sorry, my hair running's like ridiculously ugly, but um, you're gonna have to contact us and we'll send you information on how you are able to contact um, Escape Tales for a free copy of The Awakening. Congratulations. Yay! <laughs> um, if you're not on here, we'll definitely post it um, in our comments so you'll be able to be notified. Sounds good. Okay. And coming to the exciting part of today, who do we have on the show? We have Mr. Thomas Wetzel from Games and Cosmos. <laughs> I'm sure most of you know their products, which is Exit the Game, a very amazing uh, group of board games that can be mailed to your house to play with your friends and family. And we played a couple ourselves uh, more recently, Dead Man on the Orient Express, which we actually wrote a review for. Uh, we can't show too much on that because uh, we'll explain <laughs> <Based> later. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so Tom, what is his role? Tom, Tom is the marketing coordinator of the game section, and uh, we've actually uh, played a couple of escape rooms with Tom as well, which was Tom was a really lot good. Of fun. <laughs> yeah. Definitely helped us out with. Uh... <laughs> um, and uh, he's been actually collaborating with uh, Escape the Game and has seventeen games currently right now. Right? Do you do the part of the design as well? Well, or is it just um, so, marketing part? I, I do, uh, I do both, and um, it, it's interesting because when I say collaborate on these, mostly because when we get these games, they're designed by uh, a team over in Germany. The, the American designers are Inca and Marcus Brandt. Those two are great. Um, they make some amazing games. They're in German. Oh, and since a lot of puzzle in general uh, are word based. We have to take those puzzles and localize them into English, make, make English versions of the game. Some puzzles can be easy and some can be a little bit more difficult. So I do have a hand in, in helping develop. Oh, okay. So he, he also. Can you uh, hear me okay? With the topic. It's a little bit delayed for some reason. Yeah, it's coming in and out a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure if it's the internet. To yeah, I mean, we got we got the message though. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell us a little okay, history great. about the company uh, in terms of like what did uh, they start with? Was Exit the Game actually their um, you know center of their product, or was there something else that uh, things and Cosmos made as well? It has a. I think it's a very interesting history. Um, so Cosmos in Germany. You'll notice all of our games have, um, I can grab one here, uh, they say Cosmos on them. And the reason is because in Germany, the company's named Cosmos. And they've been making science kits and toys and games for over 200 years. It's really impressive. The phenomenal company mm -hmm. with like wow. an amazing product. And uh, about 15, 17 years ago, uh, in the United States, the uh, company was the, the, the story of how that actually started is pretty interesting too. But I won't get into details. But the museum uh, was interested in distributing some of the really great products. The contact Cosmos in Germany, or was on Thames. There's actually like the Thames Museum. That's where the Thames come. Now you can say Thames or Thames. It doesn't really matter. I mean, we we go by. Uh, so we started yeah. with science kids and toys, and then as the relationship with Cosmos grew, we were bringing over all of their science uh, toys exclusively. We then started doing their game. And Cosmos has the most amazing games in the world as well. High quality German components, German design. Uh, so we're very lucky to have 
kind of hopped on that trade when we did. This game has been a huge success for us, and it, it definitely it kind of the step of our board game catalog right now. Okay, so when yeah. was Exit the Game introduced in terms of timing? Yeah, the, when was the first one? 2017. Oh wow! Do you remember what was the first game yeah. ever that came out? 2017. Like the first uh, what, uh, board what game it? version of an escape game, or? Uh, yeah, the Exit the Game line. Uh, what was the first one that came out? Do you do you remember? I mean, this isn't part of the quiz. We're just wondering. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I actually have them lined up here behind me, as you can see, oh, bye. and uh, I have them in order. But the text is probably too small to see. the The first three actually came out. Um, oh. It's uh, the abandoned exit, the abandoned cabin, exit the Pharaoh's tomb, and exit the secret lab. Oh. And all three of those actually won the German uh, connoisseur game of the year, the Kenner Spiel Award, which, if you follow that award, is very prestigious and right. very. Um, high honor. So yeah, I think we played. Uh, we played those. Cabin. We played the Pharaoh's Tomb and the uh, the Cabin. Yeah. Um, what 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 do you think about the timing though? Was that when escape rooms were kind of booming in the market? Is that why you know Exit the Game came out with that concept? Like, were you guys pioneers in that category? So I still remember the email I got from my bot asking me if I've ever done a physical escape room before and if he thought there was potential in the market for a board game version. Um, there was, to my knowledge, at least one other escape room game on the market at that time. And I had played that. I'd also played some escape room games. So I was already a big fan. So when he gave that proposition or took me that email, I got really excited. I think that physical escape room games had already kind of uh, awesome a little bit not quite as much as they have now so we were really to that and early very early on in the uh board game implementation of the game but we weren't the oh, okay okay uh, what do you think about uh like you know the market in itself like because i feel like as is like unlocked is probably one of your com competitors or you know you could say like companions in, in, the <laughs> same, yeah, in the same category but um what do you think you or your game in terms of differences wise versus their um, game concept yeah unlock is is definitely one of our biggest uh competitors i don't even like to think of it that way because it's such a big high there's so much business there there's so many enthusiasts um there's room for everyone right in, in yeah. that. Uh, I think the biggest difference between Exit the Game and uh, Unlock is that Unlock relies on an app. Uh, you type in your answer into the app and it tells you if you got it right or wrong. Um, and that's really, really clever. Ours, on the other hand, are completely analog. You can do the whole game without any computer or even, I mean, you would want a stopwatch. Um, also, one thing that makes ours different is they're a little more tile. So in ours, you're going to be drawing on things and cutting and tearing things, which I really like. And this makes it a little more invested, a little bit more involved. Um, it does, however, uh, make them one use only. But you wouldn't want to play them again anyway, because you already know the answer, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I actually recently just discovered that you do have an app, and uh, you're able to um, have music playing and had the entire intro done in digital. I was like reading through the, full, the rule book. I was like, oh gosh, I wish that, you know, they had like a uh, introductory kind of uh, concept behind it. And then I was like, oh my God, the app has everything. Yeah. And uh, the 3D rotational thing on the game itself and the way they were, um, you know, throwing out this uh, aspect of teaching you how to play, that's great. When was the app introduced? Like when did that get incorporated? Shortly after, so this game exploded. Uh, it did super well right out of the gate, and with that, we we started to develop the app to, to kind of broaden the the scope of who might be interested in this game. We, we try to make it easy as possible to learn how to play the game, but then the puzzles are of course hard. You know, like but the what should be difficult are the puzzles, not the the, the how the game actually. Okay. Right. And uh, how big is uh, exit? 
in the game right now in terms of department? Like, do you have different uh, aggregate game like divisions in all over the other countries? And um, you know, how many people are on the team? So, boy, that's a tough number to come up with. <laughs> what you alluded to is that it is worldwide. Uh, these games they do start in German and in Germany, uh, and then they get translated to just. You know, I've lost count of all the languages, you know, French and Russian and Spanish and, uh, I mean, all of the major languages, uh, definitely. I think that there's a bunch of other ones that, um, like, that I know that are happening there as well, but I, I don't actually have a list of all of them right now. Oh, okay. But I mean, like, in terms of team, as in, like, how many people are on the team, like, if, uh, in the U.S.-wise? I know I met one of your other colleagues <laughs> during our escape room adventure, but um, in the, I guess, Rhode Island area office, how many people do you have? So, the the people, when, when we get a new game, uh, uh, we bring in people from our uh, staff and our customer service staff to get together and play and then you met Ed. He's the uh, he's the English developer editor, and so there's Ed. There's also Jacob, who is the president of the company. He gets involved because he's also a big fan of the series. He gets involved. We all get involved. So there's it, it's hard to nail down. Like there's not like a dedicated team, but once you combine everyone, there's you know 20 of us working on it in English. Once once we get the the German files. Oh. We, we put a lot of time and a lot of effort into these things. Yeah. We actually have a, a little bit of a funny story. We, we mentioned it to you when we had a, a coffee uh, that other night. Uh, we were on a cruise mm -hmm. ship and we were playing in the, the game room section of the ship. And then people kept walking by like, what, what, what is that? What do you guys do? Because we were like putting together pieces yeah. and... and yeah, so it was like like free promotion for exit the game, but everybody was just like, "What is that? What is that? That's what is? What do you do with it?" And the good thing about this game is that um, the boxes are so small, so it's yeah. like really easy Travel. to carry around. <laughs> you know, like it's like, oh, it's so light, I could just throw it in my suitcase. So that's what we like. Um, you know, and then each game has its own very different theme. So you would never really, mm -hmm. you know, come up with some kind of like repetitive storyline. Right. Um, which is really... I think that's something you probably considered when you started creating the original product was that it should be travel size, right? Because you want to take it and go. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and, and also part of that was we wanted to keep the price really low. Uh, because these are one and done, right? Like if you buy coffee, you're going to get together with your family, your friends, you're going to get one. We want to make sure people feel the they spent on it and the amount of plates when they get out of it. But that right. reason too, we want to make sure. That, that, that's another reason why they're small. We actually right. call that size the fun size. The fun size. Oh, yeah, I know. We know you expanded to larger size, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're going to take one little break and uh, announce the raffle uh, secret word of the day, um, which what exit the game is that generous enough to so give us a free copy of one of the uh, uh, winner is a free copy of the Haunted Roller Coaster. Yeah. Is that the newest one, by the way? It looks amazing. Whoa. This one came out um, last year. Okay. It's not the newest, but I'm such a huge fan of this one, so I'm excited to give this one away. Yay. All right. Well, so, guys, get ready because... Type in who done it. Type in who done it. And then you will be automatically entered into our raffle and we'll announce the winner on our next episode, episode five actually, because we have episode four right after this. Um, and we'll announce the winner for all the entries that have come in. Yay! By the way, do you want to just re re uh, re-announce the person that won the last one, so just in case? Or um, we just post yeah, we'll post it later. Okay, That's so, fine. Yeah. Um, okay, and then continuing on with our interview. So who is the, are you guys your own publisher? Or are you use another company for all these games? So are you talking about like the physical publication? Yeah, like, and also I guess the production side of it. Yeah, so we we actually work with, we have a very good relationship with a, a company that, that prints them for us and assembles them in a box. We also work on uh, developing and, and responding the games, editing the games, oh, and okay. marketing and board and all of that. Is that in Germany? Um, 
a big part of the company is, is in Germany, but the U.S. side definitely growing, and okay. and the product, the printing of it actually happens in Germany too. Interesting. So I guess here comes the part where I ask you what the crazy stories are in terms of a print issue. If if you found something an error or whatnot in the game, what happens? What is the disaster moment? Oh. So the very very first printing of the very first series we did, there was a very minor error because we we, we took a, a puzzle we didn't like how it felt, so we completely switched it. No problem there. The puzzle worked great. So in the games, we have answers. So if you ever get stuck, you flip over a card, and it's kind of like the guy in the next room, or the the actor, right? The, the lady will come in and she'll be like, "You guys need to look into here." So it right. kind of those cards act that. We didn't update that card entirely. So there was just the smallest little detail that wasn't uh, consistent between the two cards. It still worked. Um, the answer still worked. But um, boy, when we found that out, we were just pulling our hair out. We uh, we quickly put out a like a statement on on Board Game Geek, uh, and then of course the next printing we took. Luckily, we didn't hear anyone complain. I feel like most people probably figured out the puzzle without looking at the end. Oh, right. God. Okay, so that, at least that wasn't that bad. But um, <laughs> did, did you have to reprint the whole game or just that one card and then kind of, is that like the save thing that you just like kind of release that one card on well, the website or something? We've done that before where we've, not, not in this series, but in other board games where we've found an error. We've reprinted that one card and we'll um, go in and slip it into the game with a little with a little note saying this was actually you know what this did happen with one of the exit games. I, I don't want to yeah um, <laughs> the stormy flight. Oh, okay. Okay. That. If you buy the stormy flight. If you buy uh, exit the stormy flight, you'll open it up and you'll see a loose card and a loose note that says this was printed and this card didn't put into the deck. So it's totally fixed. There's no problems that you do put there. Ah, okay. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was wondering, you know, what happens and what's the disaster recovery plan? Yeah. What is your, like, quality check? Like, how does that work? Do you have a whole bunch of people just going through the whole entire game to make sure it's 100%? Yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> He's like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Every, every yeah. game, every time we print, every time, yeah. Wow. Anytime anything is done to the game, it has to be gone through thoroughly. Yeah. Great. Um, that's how you keep the quality up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what about the uh, most popular country that your game is sold in? I, I always wonder, is it U.S. or? I mean, Jordan? the U.S. has an advantage as far as numbers, right? Because there's just so many uh, Americans. Um, but I would say because Cosmos is so well established in Germany, mm -hmm. it's probably more popular there. If you went to buy, like, if you go on um, Amazon.de, let's see, like, every one of the exit games has a price upgrade. Everyone just loves them over there. But here, we're still doing really well. Um, not, not, not entirely the same. I think that numbers wise, the US has a lot of copies of the game. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but they're very close. Okay, yeah. great. Um, and then, can you give us a little introduction on the different types of games you have right now? Because I know you mentioned you have the mini ones, and then you have the adventure games, ones. and then yeah. What, uh, what else uh, do yeah. you have there behind you? It looks like a lot of right here. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll just show you a couple here. So this is the uh, the glare. <laughs> <laughs> the glare. Exactly. The abandoned cabin. Boy, the glare is bad here. Uh, sorry, I should have taken my cover off. But that's okay. Uh, so it looks good. The majority of them in this series look like this. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is the fun size box. This is about an hour to two hours worth of play. And and the nice thing is, because you're not in like a room, you can take as long as you want. Right. Mm -hmm. you, no one's gonna kick you out. Right. You could. You can even take it. And, and come back to it later if you want. Uh, so 16 of 17 are in this size. 
Guys, while Tom is doing this, you this want to type your favorite game that you played of Exit the Game. It would be interesting to know which ones you guys like the most. Yeah. <laughs> Just type it in and. This one is in part one and two. Oh yeah, this is this is a good one. Yeah, this is uh, this one's intense. Not only is this one bigger, uh, it's longer, it's and it is. <laughs> there you go. I I personally think this is the hardest one that we've made. I agree. We, we, we've rated this one uh, a four point five out of five. We still haven't gone to part two yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you haven't. <laughs> we, yeah, we're pending. Oh, you gotta do it soon. You'll you'll forget. Uh, yeah. We might have to start all over restart. again. Yeah. We have to restart. Yeah. Yeah. That was a long one. We have it. You guys are professionals. I think you can do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have your adventure one. Adventure games. Yeah. yeah. I absolutely love these. I added this, even though. So this is not technically an escape room game because there's some differences, and the difference is. Mostly that this is more story driven than puzzle driven. There's still some really good puzzles in these, and I absolutely love them. But when you get this game, it's going to come with a, a giant book, and the book is just full of passages. It's kind of like a, um, a digital adventure book or a point click old computer game uh, program. That's what this is more similar to, but I get a lot of the same satisfaction of solving the riddles, so that's why I add these to the collection. Right. If you add these, that would put us at 20, though, because there's three of these. Ah, uh, wow. yeah, right. Is that including the that catacomb would be 20, one? Soul. That's including the catacomb one? Yes. Oh, okay, got it. Is it the same designer, like the graphic designer for all of them? Because I think the details and quality and, and, and the artwork is amazing. Like, do you guys use the same one? Yeah. I believe so. I believe it's yeah. I, I I don't get into the. I know that all the covers have a very similar like look to them, and that's intentional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and even the exit games do, do or the uh, adventure games do as well. Uh, I know that they've switched some of the actual artists uh, on some of the adventure games. So it's not always the same, but they have a, a, a style they they keep yeah, to. Definitely. Um, any news coming out that you know the audience should know here and first? Yeah, any uh, thing you can update us on or in the near future? That's not. I have good. some really. Don't get you fired? <laughs> I, I I don't think I can get fired because they don't trust me with. I'm I'm a blabbermouth. They wouldn't trust <laughs> me with anything. Please, please. <laughs> You're like Tom Holland um, for the, the Avengers. <laughs> so so something that I'm particularly excited about. Is something that um, uh, I, I, I shouldn't say anything because we don't actually have it, right? Like it's something that is being sold just now in Germany, and we're going to bring it over into the States barring any issues, right? But, so because we don't actually have it in our possession, I can't say like we're going to do it. Okay. However, it, it's so cool that there's no way we're not going to do it. And it's uh, Exit the Game Puzzles. Oh. So they're like escape room games. But they also come with like a 200 piece, 100, 200 piece puzzle that you you do. And then you can also use that and it gives you clues to solving a riddle and escaping the game. Um, it, it's very a cool idea. Yeah. Wow. Like jigsaw puzzles, right? Like mean like, mm -hmm. oh wow, I love that. So I, I hesitate bringing that up because it's, like I said, it's not available in the United States yet. Um, but. I get excited about it. So if you ask me if there's something new and exciting, I'm excited. I'm pretty sure most of our viewers who are fans of Exit the Game is like, no, bring it over. We want, we want to play that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then as a player, if you wanted to purchase these games, where can I get them? In the US. So, here we uh, we we encourage the uh, local game stores uh, want to spend because uh, we've got really good support from them. Uh, we sell a lot of these through your local mom pop board game store. If there's one of those near you, that's what I would encourage you to do. But of course, it's available in the online stores like Amazon, Cool Stuff, Miniature Market. I mean, there's so many of them, I hesitate even bringing up any of them. But yeah, yeah. they're available yeah. everywhere. Yeah, we'll post a link down yeah. below in the description so you guys can uh, uh, go ahead and purchase those games yeah. on there. Also, um, we have a 
we just released a review for uh, Dead, Dead Man on the Orient, Orient Express, so you can yeah, find out what our how thoughts the game are. Is playing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the final question: If the uh, you, any of the you know players just started playing this game, what would be one that you suggest them to start with? And also, what is your popular seller? I I really like this question because I think it's a good one. Uh, I get people asking me all the time, like, "Oh, my friends and I work for uh, you know players. Uh, we're going to start with the most difficult one." Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Because even the simple, even the like two star simple ones are still very difficult. And I recommend starting with something like either Exit the Mysterious Museum, Mysterious Museum, or uh, even like the House of Pearls. Those are good ones. They're two stars, which means you can focus on learning how the game plays. And then once you know how the game plays, it'll be much easier for you to go to more difficult ones. But they're not easy. Right. It's like going to an escape room uh, you in person. You kind of get an idea of how their puzzles are structured, and then the next room, you, you kind of you know get through it a little bit faster. For sure. So when you mentioned about the level, they're all on the boxes, um, as you can see. Yeah, which I think here. is great because it allows you to know which ones to select based on your expertise. Yeah. Are all your games um, also with age? Uh, you know. Uh, requirements in terms because I know some of them say like 14 plus and say 12 plus like um, you yeah. have all of that on there okay and they're mostly gonna be in that range or all of them are well okay so exit the catacombs is 16 plus and the reason for that is because it is our most difficult one but it also has some more adult content okay uh, nothing vulgar nothing bad like I would say with my nephews but we want to make sure people know that as well. all the other are either 10 or 12. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, can, I can assume the, the storyline, the catacomb would be a little more creepier. <laughs> <laughs> or you just play it, though. Yeah, you just yeah. <laughs> um, All right, so um, once again, whoever joined us just now, if you type in the word who done it, um, you might get a chance to uh, win the uh, copy of the Haunted Roller Coaster. Yeah, we see some entries coming in. Thank you so much. Um, keep bringing them in. Um, also, we'll allow you to do this up until the next episode. Yeah, that's fine. Episode. I mean, in case people can watch it now. So. Right. Um, okay, exciting, the most exciting part of the game. And Tom is so ready for this because he actually went to some local supermarket <laughs> and got stocked up. <laughs> so first of all, before we get started, uh, it's a new segment that we're uh, incorporating into our Behind the Masterminds uh, where logo is being created. We don't have it yet. Uh, once we do, we'll have it yeah. plastered on our screen, but it is called... Uh, eat or drink. Take a drink. <laughs> we're going to hit our guests with five questions on their own company or their own product. Yeah. If they get it wrong, they got to take a drink. If they get it right, well, what is the drink we got to take a drink. And we are drinking Corona Fresca, which I believe this one is Guava Lime. So Lime. we'll see how this one is. Yeah. What do you have over there, Thomas? <gasps> oh, no. a real man's drink. <laughs> He's like, I'm not doing beer. Yeah. Do you want to trade? <laughs> I actually really like I, I like those uh, sugary summery drinks. I like those a lot. Um, this I one would trade if we were. If we're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So are we ready? Okay, uh, you have ten seconds to answer each question. You'll have a timer that's going to be on the side of your screen. So once the timer. I did drive off, today. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, are we ready with the timer? Make sure we have that on the screen. Yeah. Okay, first question. What's on the cover of the Dead Man on the Orient Express? Uh, there's a box car that you would sit in. A briefcase, overhead compartment. Okay, we're, we're looking for a glass, wine glass that spilled wine on the table. Because that's yes, that too. All right. People that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> nice. Yeah, so, uh, Zas Kawaii had wrote, you better know your own game because it's a quick way to get drunk otherwise. <laughs> you know, I'm okay with not knowing my games or knowing my games and getting drunk anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we ready for Either way, two? we're having fun, so. <laughs> question two is, what is the time on that clock? 
on this cover. Oh, come on, no way I can remember that. On Dick Man? I don't know, like 3.30? No, sorry. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, four, four, less 15, than an hour off. 4.15. <laughs> Okay. Wow, these this are very one, tough. This one could be a little bit easier. Um, how many cards are in that game? <laughs> uh, so 30, 30, there's probably around 110. No. no? <laughs> That's 86 right there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> look, look, the right cheek is turning a little Cheers. bit. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the question. fourth question, yeah. What is the colonel's name in that game? This looked like three years ago. <laughs> um, colonel Mustard. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong game, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, that was That's classic, though. That is definitely Did a classic. You know the right answer. Yes, it's Abruthian? <laughs> He's not gonna um, know. Okay. <laughs> He's like, you could have sure. said anything close and we would have gave it to you, but <laughs> Colonel Mustard is definitely something we yeah. like in another game. Okay, we're gonna give you a little freebie here, yeah. or a little relaxing from drinking. I hope so. <laughs> this one you definitely When do have. I get to ask you guys questions? <laughs> <laughs> this what? one, wait, this one you, de I, I feel like he has in a bag. I, I'm, I'm, I feel confident about him getting this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go, you ready? <laughs> okay. I'm ready. What are the colors of your riddle cards, help cards, and answer cards? Okay, I do have that one. The, uh, the help cards are green, riddle cards are red, and the answer cards are blue. Woo! Just in time! Well, well I've been getting a little thirsty Truth, watching yeah. the drink, so... Yeah, we are getting a little thirsty here, so... Mmm! <laughs> Pretty good! Not that sweet! Um... Still taste the Corona in there a little bit. Oh yeah, but definitely you get a <laughs> little bit of refreshing uh, yeah. si situation. So um, we do have a bonus question, though, right? Yeah, bonus question to make up for all the other times that you didn't. <laughs> all right, is it going to be harder? Uh, medium level. Well, actually, how much do you have left in that cup? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> yeah, um, I will drink yeah. for two seconds. Three seconds. Because <laughs> I can't, I don't know, I can't, you know. You would have to chug the thing. Chug the whole can? If, okay. if he gets it yeah. right. Yeah, this bonus question, if you get it right, I will chug the whole can. If we get it, or you don't get it right, then... Then, goodbye. You bottoms go up. to sleep with them. Is that okay with you? <laughs> with Absolutely. All right. All right. So, uh, let me get the timer ready, and go ahead. Oh, no, I have to read first. Okay, yeah. so, how many suspects are in that game? Uh, let's see. I only know generally. I want to say there's uh, eight. <laughs> He's like, I need to go buy a lottery. Now. Cheers. <laughs> need... I'll drink two. Oh, oh, see, what a comrade. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was pretty. That was a pretty good guess. Was that a guess or did you actually know it? I, 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 was, I knew it was the other seven or eight, so that was a guess. Oh, okay. See? <laughs> oh. Was that good? Because you have another show. <laughs> yeah, I might have to take a nap before the next show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, so one more time, guys. Um, we are, we are uh, raffling off. Mm -hmm. The haunted roller coaster. Yeah. And uh, all you need to do is type in a secret word below, which is who done it. Who done it? Yeah. Make sure you put a question mark. It's very important. Who done it? Yeah. We need to know who done it. So, any other questions for Tom? Oh yeah, the these we're open for Q and A. If you guys have any questions yeah. based on uh, any of the exit the game, um, play that you played or any upcoming products. Now's the time to just uh, type in some questions yeah. while we uh, well, chit-chat with him. <laughs> yeah, Brennan's a little bit out of uh, Lost in Wars already, so <laughs> I'm a little worried about the next show. Might be nad time. <laughs>
Um, yeah, and, <laughs> and thanks for Krista Jones for saying shout out to support the lo uh, local store. Yes, absolutely. Support the local stores. For sure. Yes, we, we love, love that. it. Um, and then for yep. the... Especially yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially right now. Yeah, um, I'm wondering, like, did, did, did your business get a little bit hit from the... Or did it actually go up because everyone's staying home kind of playing these games? Like... Puzzles have been very popular, and a lot of a lot of stores are doing a, a pickup. Like you can drive to the store and, and pick up products you buy over the phone. So for that reason, exit games have been selling extremely well. Oh, okay, great. Um, and we have we a have question. a couple of questions. Yeah, from one is from Krista Jones. It's uh, which is your personal favorite and why? <laughs> It's a tough question because I do I do like them all. However, the first one, the very first one I did was Exit the Abandoned Cabin. And because that was the first one I did and it totally blew my mind. I mean, other ones have too, but because that was the first one, it's 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 a little bit more special to me, I guess. Um, yeah, I really like that. But every single one of them has, in my opinion, a hand up moment. Hmm. A puzzle that just totally blows you away. A puzzle that you think you're so close on, and then all of a sudden it like just clicks. I, I love it. They're great. They all have their special moments to, yeah, for to sure. the game. We agree. Yeah. And then we have another question yeah. from this Kawaii, and he's saying, "How does Exit determine the difficulty levels for their games?" That's a good question. Yeah. yeah so that's part of the play testing. Uh, we get input from the, uh, our, our colleagues in Germany, and then when we get them here, we play them and play test them, and then we make it if it's possible that if, if we get a lot of uh, feedback from customers, we can change that, right, on a future print if someone's like, no, this one's much harder. However, I think we've been pretty good at, uh, now, obviously, different people are going to find different puzzles more or less that's difficult. Right. So there's always going to be a little bit of uh, a discrepancy with some people and how they perceive it. But generally speaking, I think we do a really good job with the, the rating on that. So most of the uh, beta testing or play testing is by the employees, or do you open it up to like focus groups or you know other people that are not part of the company? Uh, right now, it's all in house. So uh, yeah. and we have, like I said, about 20 people in the office which is a little bit harder right now because a lot of people are working from home. So like I went through and played the games, like the most recent ones, but on my computer. Um, but it's tough, but yeah, we're, we're still going through and playing. Okay. Nice. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for our episode three of Behind the Masterminds yeah. with Thomas from Tames and Cosmos, a uh, good friend of ours, definitely a really good guy to hang out and grab drinks with. <laughs> I don't want to be in a drinking competition with family. You just like chug food. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would go for whiskey too, but I, I do have to do something in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you guys are hoping. This is this is great for me. I get to just participate. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's not a punishment for me. I think you enjoy it. <laughs> so um, just thank you for tuning in, guys. Uh, one more time, secret word is down below. Who done it? Uh, you'll automatically be entered into our oh, raffle. Actually, sorry. Oh, one of the last Krista, question yes. from Krista, and she's saying, how did you end up in your position? Like, what did you uh, look up for when when uh, hiring? Ah, uh, good good question, and uh, it, it's. So I've been a board game fanatic for many, many years. And a very good friend of mine has been working for things with Cosmos for years and years before that. Anyway, when when uh, Cosmos, things with Cosmos started bringing games in, he said, hey Tom, you should come check that. Ah. So, uh, I, was the, I was a board game fanatic first and uh, you, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, rip this at home, but if I did, you would have seen the wall of games behind me. I've got hundreds of games. Wow. I'm, I'm a little bit of a fanatic. So that's, that's how I kind of got in, just doing what I like. Do you keep the games that you play? Like even the ones that are one-time use, like do you still keep them or like? I don't keep the exit games. Once I've used them, I usually just recycle them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. We're thinking about uh, building a 
Mega wall. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> make our own mural of like <laughs> of all escape game boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Final. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, guys, guys, stay tuned. We have our episode yeah. um, four yeah, coming up. up with Society of Curiosities yeah. at uh, what time? 3 p.m. Eastern mm -hmm. time. Thank you. Thomas, thank you so much. Uh, it was great learning more about Tains and Cosmos. And thank you guys for tuning in for episode three of Behind the Masterminds. We'll see you next time. Bye. If you need to, don't hesitate to ask for help. help. For hints and clues for you to think it through. Lead a board or not, is whether you win or lose. Yeah. Three hints Three left for me to choose. choose. Two hints left for me to use. One hint left for me to move. Time is running now, gotta figure something out. Three hints left for me to choose. Two hints left for me to use. One hint left for me to move. Time is running now, gotta figure something out.